Hey, what's going on, guys? I know I haven't dropped a video about the budget bill for a minute. It's a rough couple of days. I actually have to leave tomorrow and uh, to go do something special for you guys. You'll have to stick around to the end of the video to find out what that is, though. Anyways, what I got for you today is a semi-painted hull and a kind of slightly refurbished, less ugly trailer. So we finally made a move on it. Now I've been dragging my feet on it because I found in, in pretty much all my projects that if I try to push through it, it just doesn't come out as good. There are mistakes that are made, but if I just sit on it and think about it, that's when it comes out great. And that's only a, that's only a luxury I'm able to have because of you guys. I never was able to have that with uh, when I had like alleged clientele or partnerships where they really were kind of just, it was always like somebody trying to squeeze, get me to do it as fast as possible, as much as possible for as little money as possible. And they always squeezed on me and I hated that. You know, see me try to make all these stellar builds before and I had all these big promises and ambitions and then toward the end they were all fails and they had people call me out like why do we say your things would be the greatest thing ever and at the end all you have is all these excuses well it's because like you know rushing through it it's not great so just sit on things sometimes if you have the luxury to just sit on it and think about it then you take that luxury so I thank you guys thank you all patrons thank you all channel members anybody who's who's gone to my store to allow me to be able to do that also, like how you guys reacted to the Palm Prowler made me rethink this whole thing, too, because we're going to do this whole big elaborate build, giving this thing away, which has stressed me out, all, all the stuff that, thinking about how I was going to do that. So we'll be touching up about that toward the end of this video. But see how you guys react to the Palm Prowler, how I want to do a more doable kit, something that's much easier. We're going to go with our, our basic plan before we start going haywire and out of control. I also want to talk to you guys very quickly about this unit which i'll be probably buying like 10 of these and sticking them in everything like low key i'm gonna try and make a rental fleet of fishing boats out here nobody's doing it nobody there was all kinds of crap going down here in havasu no fishing rentals but i'm gonna do it pretty ambitious plan and it's either gonna fail or it's gonna succeed but you know uncle joe's squeezing us all i gotta find out other ways to make more money so i don't know it's like a super big shot in the dark if it's gonna happen down here with lake me drying up and everything but if i so happen to pull it off i'm gonna get a bunch of these because these are dope these are these are rechargeable gps units with their own like database so you can set parameters and you can monitor where the boat goes you can find it if it goes out of the parameters you can find out whether somebody violated your area if you have like say my kids always want to break out and take one of my boats he's been asking me lately because he's at that age i can stick this in there that way when he goes and crashes into a rock or breaks the prop or breaks the shaft I'll just go find him and then he won't just be lost out there in the lake. Some of you guys go on huge lakes where like people disappear. And then also just on the basis, you know, if you have a nice truck or you have a nice anything, you have a nice camper, you know, it's out in your front yard and you're worried it's uh, one day morning you're going to wake up and it's not going to be there. Stick this somewhere underneath your seat. Nobody's going to know that's there. Got a little magnetic thing with some 3M tape. You can stick it anywhere, anywhere in your truck, anywhere in your car, anywhere in your boat, your camper. So I'll be getting lots of these. You guys want to check these out? Check out the link in the description below and you can see a little bit more about them. But I'll be I'll be referencing these maybe quite a bit through another ladder series of this, including one will be going in this boat. You guys ready for the sloth race? I'm not, but I have to. The budget build is on the trailer. It is, yeah, you know. We still need rest to go to the top floor. We didn't do it for a few reasons, mainly because we were trying to, to kind of template and grade out the actual frame. And now that we have done that, we can pretty much do anything we want now. It's a live ball, by the way, over there, slash cooler, slash whatever you want it to be. We did template out the deck to get the two major cross beams that are gonna be in the boat, and then have the two major layout beams that are gonna also be in the boat. So actually, once these are crossed, then it's okay. We can now resin it, and then we can lay those down, take these off, lay those down etc so most of this will be kind of gutted and taken out for the moment only to be put back in but after we get a nice quick coat of west systems 105 the outside hull is looking like crap it doesn't really matter like what paint stripper you're using uh it's jasco's paint epoxy remover pine strip citrus strip freaking aircraft remover they all suck i say that officially I don't know what happened, but somebody banned a chemical that was really crucial in taking out paint. So this, this like 1960s lead paint, it's probably coming off. I'll tell you what. At, at one point in time, I'm thinking whether or not I should just take this to go get it uh, blasted. Dust Carl. Get it dustless blast thing. Get, get this thing dust, dustless blasted for about 600 bucks. For 1200, he would do the whole thing. We're talking about it's more money than I pay for the boat. 600 bucks is more than what I pay for the boat. 
kind of look kind of like mm. the boat's worth a lot more with what we have in it now so still a little torn still could go either way so in this trailer it's also messed up as you know we've got trailer mod stuff on our side now so this stuff we'll figure out ways around it this is clearly a nice homemade trailer of some spot i don't really know what to do about it though you can tell the paint this is like latex house paint followed by some other paint followed by the original paint followed by the primer and then eventually if you dig deep enough there's the hull it's like five layers of shit here. legit the hardest paint job i've ever had to get off of any boat very 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 taxing out of every art project or anything i've ever had to build i love to build it but i hate to paint it i hate painting but it's just time to man up and just suck it up you guys should check out this trailer this is a uniquely homemade trailer works really well actually it's 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 actually pretty good it's got a very questionable axle other than that you know it's it's all right it's got like low-key you know olden days gator back bunks there those are like the same kind of deal the, the little the uhnw plastic tracks so those are already welded in place sorry to got rollers this is a really really good trailer ready for the boats we're just gonna spruce this one up get it bonded and send it on its way to being an official trailer that we can have for the boat. All right, we're gonna flip this thing over. This is the worst boat I've ever had to do. Look at this, there's like, there's like blue stuff. Did this used to be blue? This used to be a turquoise boat? Not crazy. I don't even know what to say about this. Other than that's crazy. But this is the only way we're ever gonna strip this whole thing is if we just go at it with no mercy. No mercy. Paint stripper, here we come. We using this stuff. We're gonna try this. We've tried everything known to man. We still got a bunch of other stuff. We got like an arsenal of things to throw at this. By the way, what is it with all of you like vouching for aircraft remover as the best stuff on it? No, it's not. Not anymore, at least. I tried it, it sucked, just like everything else. There is one thing though in this video that works really well and you're gonna have to stick around to see what it is. I have strategies, I don't know if they'll work, but I have them. All right, I can only record in short spurts. The phone keeps overheating. It's freaking like 112 outside today, so, but it's kind of working. I mean, it's, it's pulling off some initial, initial parts of the layer. It's, I don't know, it's getting through, there's even so many layers of paint. What's that? It's almost getting to the green primer, so it's almost getting there. So, you know, it's, it's, it's doing all right. It'll take a little bit of time. I'll just chew on it when I have time, work on other projects when I have it. Um, you know, even after I have to, have to buy two more of those, it's still way cheaper than what it would have cost to get a dustless blaster. But if you guys have a cheap, you know, sand blaster or a dustless blaster or soda blaster, whatever, you know, the blasters out there, I would definitely hit them up and get, get it done. Besides doing this, but this is how we do it. This is how we're gonna grind it out. To my surprise, that first layer actually did exceptionally well. I cut through like three layers of paint. And in some cases, it actually got to the bare metal. So there is hope. Where I noticed that where it didn't perform very well at all is when it started turning yellow. And it started turning yellow when there was just a little bit of sun peeking over the edge. You can see here where it didn't do so well. But over here where it still is, it did pretty good. I mean, we, did, we didn't put as much on here as we, we should have. We need to put more on here. But I want to scrape the rest of this little area here and then I'm gonna put some on it again now that it's in the shade and leave it there for a minute and then I'm gonna go and see if I can get a, a, a softer wire wheel that I can put in the grinder and maybe we can just go to town on this and get it. All right, so there I was just grinding away pretty aggressively I might add. All of a sudden I start feeling a bunch of like bee stings. Like things stinging me and I wonder. So I got this one, this little wire, it's like right in my nipple. This one like a few more and then down to my legs like these got real close to like you know the special area and then like these are just like completely my they're all over my leg ah ow i never seen that in my life it's like so many so the first round went really well i maybe think i had a, a better chance than i had thought and then i went a second round ago and it has been monsooning down here so it's been a little rough yeah but today was kind of uh an l i only got somewhat more than what i thought i would get so th 
the the exterior paint that I didn't get in the first round is just really tough stuff. It is from another time, I tell you what. And the stuff on the side seems to be pretty tough too, but we'll have to do the side dip more tactfully. Right? Right, so this is all the paint that just came off it so far, which is like, it's almost two thirds full on the bucket. Normally I can't get this bucket to be like one eighth full or even one quarter full. I mean, there generally isn't a whole lot of paint on a boat. This, I, I, would, I would imagine that this thing, once all the paint and primer is scraped off of it, that it would fill up the whole bucket. The whole bucket of paint and primer, like of dried paint and primer. Like this is dried stuff. That's it's seen. So it seems like it'll get some of it, but a lot of the spots here in the paint are stronger than the rest of the paint. Like some came off pretty easy. Some seem impenetrable. I had that metal scraper. It seemed like it weakened the paint enough to where you kind of scrape it. So I was able to get a substantial amount of it off, but really not a whole lot of it off. It actually burnt me out and I kind of got depressed because I was thinking I'm about to take a third L because this is just miserable in the heat. So what did I do? I did what every other person in this position does. I went fishing. Fishing for bluegill. Screwed around and cut. A pretty nice sized bass. I can't believe you picked that. Bass never picked that. You must have just been annoyed. Somebody tipped me off about this stuff the other day. How many boats I've painted and how many comments I've gotten. And then randomly, somebody who is actually knows what they're doing is like, open cleaner will take it off. It's the best crap ever. It's better than any paint stripper you can get at the hardware store. Better than anything. I, I'm, I'm like fab, flabbergasted. Like this is just out there creeping in the car. Look what happens right now. I'm gonna spray this stuff. This is not the fume free stuff. It's the heavy duty stuff. That's the target area we're gonna spray. Now I'm gonna go get, <clears throat> I'm gonna go get a, a fume mask. Shake it. I think it works better if you shake it. It doesn't say that on here, but I'm pretty sure shaking it is giving me a little bit better result. All you hard spots. All right, so this side's been baking for a minute, guys. Check this out, all right? Three layers of the strongest stuff I could find at the hardware store, a paint and epoxy remover, and it would not even touch this paint. Nice, I just doused it in oven cleaner. It's freaking magic, freaking magic. You know what's even better than this, though? A pressure washer. A pressure washer will take care of all this. Even with everything I've thrown at this hole and done to these things, there's these spots of paint that just refuse to come off, like will not come off. At a loss for words. Hey guys, check this out. So here, look how nice that is. It sort of looks like it's like brand new pressed aluminum, like just came, this is like a, this is a 1960s hole, 1970s hole. It looks, we got it stripped down to where it looks almost bare damn brand new aluminum and spots. What did that? Was it a paint stripper? No, it was, oven cleaner oven cleaner did it knowing that it was going to be like this in the freaking hot summer and it was going to drag i've only been able to do this in spurts generally in the evening i've been taking a more aggressive stance on it because i have to leave in two days and i'm still not got all the paint off or to a sufficient amount where i'm like satisfied to where i can primer it and be okay with it and stick it on a trailer and stick it back in my garage it has been a real pain and as far it kind of makes me wish i just that guy just came down here and i would have paid the six eight hundred bucks and done it but that would have really set me back budget wise for the boat like substantially back um if i'd have known the easy off trick i probably could have got this done with about a hundred dollars worth of cans way faster and we would have probably had the problems with this with this like splotchy paint where you know some of it's mixed better than the rest so it's really stuck like i don't know what's in this paint but uh it's legit i've been hitting it with the orbital sander i'm gonna i'm gonna level off spots because whoever did this level, it's one layer of paint and primer followed by another level of paint and primer so it's got like two really good coats of paint and primer on it so the other person who who recoated it never brought it down to bare metal and that stuff stayed on top of that like like flies on crap like it was never coming off still won't come off now so that leads me to believe that if i just get it down level and i stop trying to get it to bare metal that it, and i just level off the rest of this it's getting there you know sometimes if you if you put it on there and you scrub it in there with that like you scrub it and then it just slowly slowly chips away that's eventually how we got all the paint off the uh the yak killer same way and that was a that was a miserable miserable paint job that was even a smaller boat than this one that one killed me man I'm tired of stripping boats i hate it it's the last boat i ever strip if the boat has paint on it it's a deal breaker i'm not gonna buy it and once we got that going then we're gonna just kind of repaint the trailer scuff that thing up repaint it and do this do much do much of the same thing here it is not so bad 
Looks, it came out all right. You know what this is? <laughs> Total Boat Aluminum Barrier Coat, which was maybe the best stuff that I could have got, to be completely honest. And then this paint here is just a straight up Rust-Oleum oil-based enamel paint thinner. To thin it out so it wouldn't be so nasty and disgustingly thick like it usually is. And it came out, I think, pretty spectacular, considering the orange peel. So what I did was I got this stuff, and you know, the paint, just a, a paint mixer. Stuck it in there, pour that in there, then I poured this in there, poured, I kept pouring a little, a little spurs until I got it thin enough, but it was pretty thin. Like, you know this stuff is pretty thick and disgusting if you ever try to get into wood. So another another key thing if you're trying to get this to penetrate wood and, and do a real good job of, you know, preserving it, thin it out. And it'll do so much better job preserving your wood long time. As it is, wood will soak this in like you wouldn't believe. And it's, it's really it's pretty fascinating considering how thick and nasty this stuff is. But if you really want it to go in quick, like your, your wood will last so much longer if you're going to go this route to preserve it. I know it's way cheaper than using uh, marine epoxy or any epoxy really. Well, this enamel's super cheap. It's also extremely robust and durable. It's the most thick, disgusting, nasty stuff you get on your finger. It won't come off. Like this, not gonna come off for a week. Unless I like go at it with some fast orange or something. But that's how I did it. Paint thinner, specifically for, right? Oil-based paints, Ben's oil-based paints. That's why I got it. Oil-based paint. Mixing cup. Sponge roller. Boat. Paint it. Nice, thick, durable bottom coat win you know i was kind of wondering how questionable it would be with all these pits and stuff but it doesn't look too bad it's doing all right could be worse very unique design though this trailer i still do like it a lot it's already good we will probably add some different type of bunk guides here but that's just us that's just something we'll do other than that we're just gonna this is a good trailer obviously the wiring job is extremely questionable and yeah, I think heaven that nobody pulled me over dragging wires like that. Obviously it wasn't working. There's no way I could have lied or done anything. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Just a bunch of scrap metal put together and got some tubes and that's pretty unique. Getting those tubes and put them there like that. That was some, that's some ingenious thought going in there. But like, hey, I could use these and just made a trailer. Sits so a little high out of the water though. Only concern is that it's like really high out of the water. Like it might need some smaller tires or something. Those aren't even the rims on it. I need to actually get the real rims. Those are not like supposed to be on the trailer. <laughs> to be continued. So the plan was to eventually give this boat away, which has caused a lot more complications for the project and is the reason why it's not done yet. But my crew and the people you know that I affiliate with and do boat builds with, they all want to get together in Illinois and build a pretty unique boat and then give that away instead of this. I'm going to take them up on it. That'll allow me to keep this one simple and it'll allow us to give something else like way better than whatever I could have built this out of. And that one will be an official one. And it'll be from all of us. That'll be pretty dope. So the plan is to fly out tomorrow and go do it. Yeah, I just threw that on you guys. And all you guys who stayed to the end of the video will know that's about to happen. Perks for watching the vid. Thank you much, by the way. Guys, hit a like button. Help this series trend. I know it's slow going, but when I get back, there will be no more trips. It'll just be grinding and pumping out stuff. I have a pretty ambitious goal to meet at the end of the summer, and it is it is no short of ambitious. That's all I'll say. We'll see if my ambition exceeds my talent.